three lower fetters have to do with the uh, stream enterer. Yeah. The three lower fetters are basically, you know that all your doubt is gone about finding the practice. You know you have found the practice, okay? The second one is that you know it's clear to you after learning the uh, information as the Buddha was teaching it, it's clear that um, rites and rituals will not take you to Nibbana. Now notice that's what it, it's about. The, the fetter was believing that you have to keep doing rites and rituals to, to get uh, to Nibbana. It doesn't say don't go and spend your holidays and do the rites and rituals for holidays and ceremonies and celebrations. It doesn't say okay. that. Okay. So let's not get confused about this. Just because you don't grasp something doesn't mean you try not to feel at all. This is a good example of what's wrong right now. In each case, it is the attachment to the good states that should be abandoned. So what's that? Lust should be abandoned, but not the good states themselves. So this idea we have is a crooked thing, is an adama, when we say, don't allow joy to come up. If we ever hear that, we don't pay any attention to it because when joy comes up, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Nothing wrong with seeing something funny and laughing at it and going past it. And again, nothing wrong with feeling joy or elation that your daughter comes home with an A++ in chemistry or biochemistry. There's nothing wrong with this, you see? It's not wrong. The point was don't cling to it, crave and cling it. He's trying to define the, uh, the teaching. And people today, they go overboard. One guy, uh, one man, he was um, someone who helped us a lot, but he was confused about the Dhamma. And so when he was in a condominium, you know, a row house, the condos were hooked together. His front yard was the only yard that wasn't manicured and kept up. Because why? Because he thought, well, we can't kill anything. Now he's not a monk, he's a lay person, he's working in an office. And he's decided he's not going to ever cut the grass again. And everybody was upset with him. Well, I can't cut the, the flowers. I can't cut the vegetables in the vegetable yard. This is way overboard. You know, you are not a monk with 300 and some, uh, I'm sorry, 280 something rules that you're trying to follow. You're not a monk. You're a lay person. And there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, keeping your lawn neat and your house clean and all of this stuff, okay? Well, this is the same thing in here. BB wanted to make sure that he told you what the, the one commentarial writer had said. Um, there is no obstruction in, um, wait a minute, I'm sorry, wait a minute, where is it? Uh, in the case where there is an attachment that you're trying, he, he was trying to explain that the Buddha explained even giving, even, um, how do I put it? Giving up serenity practice, giving up insight practice. Why would you do that? Why? Well, because today people are, some of them get totally addicted to it. I mean, addicted to it. Not another person exists around them or anywhere else and they're totally hooked into it, but they're not monastics. If they want to be monastics, go be monastics. That's fine. But if you're you're so craving and clinging, one person wrote a note of I can't. Uh, what did it say? I can't make. I'm having so much trouble. I just can't make what happened three days ago happen again. <laughs> Every single sitting is different. Not one is duplicated from the previous one ever. You cannot repeat something again. Now, you can take a look in your diary when that happened. This is why diaries are so important. What were the conditions, do you think, what were the conditions that occurred that allowed you to fall into the level you experienced? This is important, yeah? And if you can see yourself clearly, what those conditions were, then you can look at that in your meditation and check it out as you're meditating. Am I paying enough attention? Was the, let's see, uh, this is where your um, 
faith energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom come in. This is where your your uh, different parts of the 37 requisites of enlightenment. If, are you fulfilling all this stuff? So the conditions arise always. The conditions arise. The Buddha's method was not to try to make it happen at all. So what this guy was suffering from, this person was basically suffering from, I want it to happen again. That's a problem. <laughs> okay, that's a problem. And you have to not want anything. You have to sit down and simply sit to find out what happens next. That's why, as a mom, I always tell you, this is going back to two years old. That two-year-old, when he plays, he just wanders around, checks out everything, really excited to discover everything, just to see what is next around the corner when he's walking around the yard, anything. They're wonderful, these little kids. They're building their dictionary and their encyclopedia. We, all, we already have one. That's our problem. <laughs> And we have to let go of comparing what's happening here in the present time with what happened before. Don't do that anymore. You're an explorer. And every time you sit down, you should be crossing a different glacier and discovering something new every time or a mountain or a hike, anything, you see? If you take that attitude, I'm an explorer and I'm just gonna go see what happens next. And you don't try to ever repeat anything. Then you keep going down the path pretty steadily is what we find. And you increase your hours. And you only thing you focus on is, I need to leave the building. <laughs> I need to not be here anymore. The absence of me makes everything work. But if I'm there, I'm inevitably, I want to control. I want to steer. I want to, you see? So it all, it's all hooked together like that. But the three of them were basically the doubt, the rites and rituals, not believing anymore that rites and rituals can carry you to me, Bonnet. That's the correct way of saying it. And the third one is very clearly understanding Atta and Anatta. And that means understanding the, the, re, the, um, impersonal nature clearly but it doesn't mean that just because it at the stream entry level it doesn't mean that you're never going to break a precept again you might but just like that you you catch yourself and you take it again in your mind and forgive yourself and go on you don't get hung up anymore you see it's really important you, this deciphering atta and anatta is a very big step in supporting your practice because of what he was writing about when uh, in the sutta when he was writing about how people were tearing him apart because he actually extinguishes human beings they don't understand what the buddha is teaching he's extinguishing 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 things and telling you to abandon 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 and they think that he was some people got angry at him and then they would come and talk to him and he would straighten them out once they understood we're not we're not hurting anybody. We are not. Um, we are not uh, executing anybody. We're just executing the the idea of everything is me. It's mine, myself. Once you take that position, you take everything you see, hear, smell, taste, touch personally. Once you take it personally, what's happening? what you do in every aspect of life. When something happens, the next one is you blame yourself. It's got to be my fault. What just happened is my fault. Then when you start doing that, then you persecute yourself and then you fall into depression. And then this depression is happening to me because me is this big thing that's here. And just the idea of and you have to look at it if you're in another religion and you're attempting to be one with God. This is what I tell people is, okay, fine, but let's practice when we're doing this. Let's experiment with what if this is true? What would happen if I wasn't having to control everything and make this happen? What would it be like? That's why years ago I said, I came out of, after, after meditating a long time, I came out and I said, you know what this is? 
you're asking us to experience an experience of no experience. <laughs> and that puts you in the right condition to fall into cessation. That's what was happening. See? <laughs> so, and, and after you work so hard, and you know, in, in some people in, in positions in uh, lockdown, when, um, what were the, all those things he was telling people they had to give up? What was it? I, I keep it, I don't know where it is, um, back here. Giving up your standpoints and your views and that big list of everything you have to give up. There's a lot of people that don't want to do that. That's me. My standpoints, my views, my political position, my decisions, the what I want to do. Do you hear that? I, I, I. So it's I, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> and then it's me, 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 me. That's what's happening. Me, 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 me. I thought we were in big trouble when we practiced for opera. Oh my. <laughs> Doing all our scares with me, 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 and I, 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 I. <laughs> so, but be having fun with this, you know? So now having fun with it and smiling with it and, and just experimenting with it to see where it goes. That was what was so good for you. That's what you need to try. Yeah.